Hi, my name is Eero Ylivakkuri. I'm here in Topi Aikes studio in Helsinki. And uh, let's take a look at how I am attempting to bend PVC pipe into the proper shape to forge a cross, crossbow. There you can see pipes which I've cut using a power tool into the 84 centi 83 centimeters length. And then I made this temporary bench here which can be used for uh, working in a serial manner because I need five bows for a performance but I uh, am crafting six so that I can experiment with one. So here I have some markers. This indicates the end of the line. This one is just to keep it steady. Here's one which marks the center's position. Seems that it's shifted somehow and here's something that I use. This one is already bent as you can see. So what I do here is that when I put when I've heated the pipe, then I put a wooden plank on it and then I check that it doesn't go over that area there and I cross it down using these things there. So that's how I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna show a little video on how it's done. So here we have what I got. A lot of these videos show that there's people putting like uh, aluminum foil here and making a sort of a pocket for the PVC so that the heat reflects inside. But I think that that's sort of pointless. I think that the thing here is to construct something that insulates uh, the heat so that it doesn't like fade away. And wood does the insulation as well as any other material. So wood below and wood on the side. Uh, and it, the air just keeps circulating. Now that when I only had one, I could roll the pipe easily using by my hand. But now that I'm with the other one, Need to be working on the other side and keep turning it using my hand. Let's see, this is gonna take a while. After I've got it heated, then I'm gonna turn it and put it into position. Let's see how it is close. Might be wrong about the insulation thing, but I noticed that this heated up pretty nicely. Let's see how it goes.
test part. Now I put the let's check that it's leveled here so that I can get the same shape here. Like that. Now it's already creating enough tension here because this is so tight now that I don't even need to put one here. I just need to check that the pressure doesn't get too thick so that it would go beneath if I show you here. It looks like that. I mean, I think this could be considered an aesthetic problem here because of the edge being so straight, it pushes a uh, pinches a hole there. But I'm sort of fine by it. Another aesthetic thing is that the, the screws on the sides create a sort of bulb here. But I can perhaps push that back later on. <coughs> but that's how I do it. But don't trust me, this is the first one that I'm trying to do. So the next thing I'm trying to do is create a bend into the far end of it. This one doesn't work out perfectly. It's sort of crooked. And it's also not as deep as I would want it to be. But I think it's enough. As long as I get this one symmetric, then it'll be fine. So I'm gonna hit it with my hand. Then I hate it that it sort of gets bent a little bit. So what I then did was I went for what the plastic thing, this stretching system here. This work phase is the most chaotic for me currently. I don't know why. Because I'm sort of a little bit afraid of uh, constantly reheating the pipe because it feels a little bit risky to.
risk it to reheat it all the time. I really don't know why I feel like with that. But I guess the majority of the materials I know, the more you work with them by changing their uh, structure, the more fragile they get in time. So I'm having trouble understanding why. So why would plastic be any different from that? Feels good, sort of feels good. In, even with the all of the chaos, it still feels a little bit more. But it went better than the other one. Now they're symmetrical. Almost. There's a slight bend, but it's not. It's not impossible to fix it. And all the side ends are also almost shut. As, I, as I'm making so many of them, I'm not gonna really put a lot of effort in making everything tip top. This will do. The next time we'll be making the cuts here in order to after it cools out. I'll, I'll test it like that. So I've perfect the system a little bit here. Uh, now the tension is more evenly distributed, which results into these beautiful shapes. More or less nearly. They're bulging there here and there, but it's sealed tight from the end. I also perfected the stretching of the sides by marking a spot there which I can see that is in line with something over there and then I just let it rest so that the rest goes floats sort of evenly and it rests on that which made it, makes it easy to uh, control the shape of it <sighs> but the other parts of the device are in serious trouble here's, here's the first one I made and I flunked attempting to stretch it I didn't have the patience to wait and to think. And now I'm building here a sort of a proto proto prototype for the system. I was so bored with the affair after the first failures and all of the stress that I even the wood even broke inside there, which is flunked. But let's try this one soon. And then we'll see if this system has any potential. So let's look at the bending again. Um, I'm sort of trying to figure out a decent system to do it systematically. Um, this line here is 10 centimeters and this is 5. And after it's heated, I place it sort of to 5. It's over there. And then it rests over there and that's on the handle, which shows what's the angle of um, descent. Let's call it that. You can try to make. It's much more harder than I thought.
I'm heating it up to the 10 centimeters and the 5 centimeters is a marker. Here I have a line. I'm putting it on the 5 centimeter thing. Close the gap with my hand. And the back side just rests there. Second time I'm testing it with this technique, with this like system, and still it's developing a lot of these bulbs all around. So I'm coming to the conclusion that it's really about just forming it by hand. It seems to be, I mean, I, unless I would really fix mold for it. And this forming by hand is the only option that is the best option for doing it. This, I'm just looking at that the sort of it feels like uh, yeah, it feels like it feels like plastic dough somehow sort of feel how it gets hard in your hand. <laughs> that's how you know it. I mean that's it. That's the way I imagine that it should look like. And just for fun here is the I mean this is the sixth time I'm doing this bending thing so I sort of have a routine for it. The arches look nice. There's a little bit of the thing with the screw which was discussed earlier. It shuts well together but that one opens when you start bending it also. But I'll just show you once more how to how I'm working it with these currently. So I won't put it back. Commonly I have like this wood block still here, which keeps the air circulating inside. But I sort of noticed that, well, I, I can do it without this one as well. But this one is uh, already bent. And there I have markings for 65 centimeters. That's the center part and that's 65, uh, 65 as well. 66, uh, 36, sorry. So,
just that with the heating, then I push it back into the location here. Now I've learned how to work with these systems there. So I put it on like that, and then I push gently down. And I keep the other way, other side of the thing on the board, uh, which results in becoming straight. And then it doesn't even. I mean, I can put as much tension there as as I like because because that screw there is uh, keeping it in the right like right length. This is fifty centimeters here, uh, five centimeters here, so that's about five, and then. It protects the central part of the bow to not be affected by these corners of the wood. I mean, there's a little bit of a bulge there, but that's not serious. So, altogether, a successful day. I have here five, uh, four bend pipes. Still notice there's a little bit of a bulge. Looking okay, I guess. One is there, I was just fiddling around, thinking about how to make the final system. It, it seems that these are gonna be quite strong if it's 50 centimeters, so it's the size of a matchbox. And it seems that it's a little bit too thick in order for the this. Uh, bow to arch. So I'll possibly tomorrow make them in a new shape. A little bit like an arch type so it looks like a more like a weapon. And uh, I'm gonna go now to the uh, hardware store and try to find some sort of systems that I can use as triggers. Don't know what those will be. So a fresh head start for tomorrow, I hope I still have the keys for this place. Thank you very much for Toppy for letting me stay here. <laughs>